So let's suppose that an object is allowed to fall from rest from a height of 20 meters above the ground. Now we want to calculate the velocity of the object with a mass of 6 kilograms when that object is 3 meters above the ground. So we are assuming only conservative forces such as gravity are acting on our object. So forces such as drag forces and air resistance are neglected. So let's begin by drawing our diagram, our picture. So initially our object is 20 meters above the ground and it has initial velocity of 0 meters per second because our object is at rest. Now the final position of the object is 17 meters below its initial position or 3 meters above the ground. So that means it is now traveling with some velocity. So some of that gravitational potential energy has been transformed into kinetic energy. Now if we calculate how much kinetic energy our object has at the final position, we can use that to calculate the velocity of the object. So because we are dealing with a conservative system, only conservative forces are acting on our object, we could use the conservation of mechanical energy. So the initial mechanical energy of the object is equal to the final kinetic or final mechanical energy of that object. So using that, let's begin with part A. So the initial mechanical energy of the object is equal to the sum of the kinetic energy and the gravitational potential energy. So we know the kinetic energy of the object initially is zero because our velocity of the object V1 is zero. So this term goes to zero. Now MGH is simply our mass 6 kilograms, G 9.8 meters per second squared, and H1 is 20 meters above the ground. So we multiply these values out and we find 1176 joules of energy is our initial mechanical energy. Now this initial mechanical energy is the same exact value as the final mechanical energy because of the conservation of mechanical energy when only conservative forces are acting on the object. So let's begin with part B. F uh, the final mechanical energy is equal to our sum of the final kinetic energy and the final uh, gravitational potential energy. So now this term is no longer zero because we want to find the velocity because this is the velocity of the object at this point our object is traveling with some velocity. It is in motion. Now we know that this final mechanical energy is equivalent to this value so we plug that into here. So we plug our knowns for MGH2 where H2 is 3 meters so we have 6 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared multiplied by 3 meters plus 1 half, well we know what m is, 6 kilograms, but we don't know what our v2 is, our final velocity at our final position, so that's our unknown. So we bring or all our known values to the left side and we solve for v2. We find that v2 is equal to the square root of two times the difference of these energies divided by six kilograms and we get approximately 18.3 meters per second so our object's velocity final velocity when the object has traveled 17 meters is 18.3 meters per second